Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, let's go through open GPTs from Langchain. In my previous video, where I have shown you how to create the custom GPTs from OpenAI, I have mentioned that I will be doing another video of Langchain, which is about these open GPTs. And also the third one will be from Llama Index Racks. How the video will proceed first is I will explain or I will walk you through the readme of these open GPTs. Next, I will show you how you can replicate the UI that is provided, the hosted version from Langchain, which is this one. You can just play around with this, but we will replicate this in our local host and we will be using Docker for that. I haven't seen the explanation of Docker being provided here, but what I'm trying to do is because with Docker, with just one line of code, you can just set up all the environment and then take it down with just one command. That will be much more convenient. And also I will show you how you can set up the Lang Smith in order to trace the LLM calls. It's better for debugging and, and seeing what is happening behind the scene when you do the call to LLM. Let's get started. This is the GitHub repository of OpenGPTs. As it is mentioned here, this is an open source effort to create similar experience to OpenAI GPTs and Assistant API. As I said you before also, again, I have already created a video about GPTs as well as OpenAI Assistants. Please refer to that if you want to get more information about that. But what it is doing here is it, it builds upon Langchain, LangSorb and LangSmith, which are all the products of Langchain. OpenGPTs gives you more control allowing you to configure and here are the different things it is mentioned. Here. And here is the hosted version as I said you before also you can go through this and there is this assistance API or getting started guide. Leave it up to you just to go and try here. How, how the readme file is being documented here is first it is shown here how to start the backend. You can follow this step also if you want. Uh, you can go to this repository and follow these steps, provide all the information, set up the vector database and things. And there is also the Lang Smith, as I said you before, we will also configuring that. And then you can start the backend server with Langchain or, and then start the front end, right? You can go through this process also. And here are all the features that is being shown here and how to customize these, what are the LLMs that we can use. It's not just restricted to OpenAI, if you want to use, let's say, Cloud2 or Azure OpenAI, you can also go through that, meaning that not only from the OpenAI, because Azure OpenAI, it's OpenAI, but from the Azure, right? So yeah, you can go through this and there are different things that you need to provide as an environment variables. And then you can even go and use the Amazon Bedrock. There are different tools that you can use that is provided by Langchain. As you can see, we will be using some of the tools. What I'm going to show you in the example later is I will show you how to set up the environment. And first, we'll just try if it works or not with just simple chat. And the next one will be using the DocDocGo search engine. And then third one is with the retrieval. We will be uploading some uh, file and asking the questions out of it. But if you want to go with other different things also, you need to provide the API keys and so on. I'm not going to go through that part, but Depending upon your use case, you can just follow this documentation here and provide the necessary API keys which you want to use, right? So what is the first step now? The first step is to first go on the top here and fork this repository. This is provided from Langchain AI. I, I suggest you to go here, click this one, and I have already forked this repository. So it says here, okay, so there's some quite a lot open GPTs, and I can go here, but for you, it will it will fork the repository. So yeah, here is the repository that I, I just forked that from this particular Langchain AI. It is shown here. What I have done here is this is this is the main, meaning that this branch is up to date with the Langchain AI OpenGPTs. By the way, it depends when you are watching this and it might differ. And because this is the open source attempt, uh, meaning that uh, the code will be changing. The instruction that I'm seeing now might not also work when you watch this video, but as of today, which is December 1st, it should work as it is, right? But what I have done here is created a branch here, meaning that I have first tested with fixed Docker issues and I have actually provided a pull request also here. The second one run through Docker Compose is what I have created the branch here. 
And in this branch, as it says, the branch is five commits ahead of Langchain AI, meaning that I have done some modifications here. If you scroll all the way down here, I have written the documentation in the readme, how to set up with the Docker, right? Docker setup. I will be showing you this and how you can run with Docker. First thing first, you need to clone this particular repository. For that, again, scroll up. And after you fork this, go to this code icon here. And this is the code space if you want to run in code space. But I find some difficulty running in code space. That's the reason I am going to do it locally. Just go here and HTTPS, copy the link, go to your local terminal. And I have actually already cloned this, but I will go one step back and then I will do git clone. And this is the command. For me, it will show that it is already existing here. For you, this is how you can clone this particular repository in any folder you want. Then we need to go inside this re repository, right? CD open gpt's now i am inside the open gpt and there are different branches as i said you right i'm going to switch to that branch which i have just created i will do git and then i will do branch dash a it will show me all the branches i'm going to go through this run through docker compose branch i will do q i will go back and i will do git check out run through docker compose when i run this i am now inside that particular branch as it's shown here here i was in the main branch and now i am in the run through docker compose branch now if i list what it is here as you can see these are all the things which is mentioned in that particular repository also if i go back here if i if i go to this run through docker as you can see these are all the files and folders that we are seeing now what I can do is scroll all the way down to this Docker, Docker setup place, right? What is the first thing that we need to do before going through the code? By the way, you can open in any of the code editors you want. I'm just going to use the Vim to make some changes here, right? Let me go back here. You need to first install Docker desktop. What is Docker desktop? This is what we need, right? Docker, let's say. And if you install this, we are good to go. First thing first, you need to go here and install in which uh, machine you are using. Once you download that, open the Docker. In Mac, how you can do that is just do open dash A and Docker. This will open the Docker for us. You need to have the Docker opened. By the way, you can just manually click it. But yeah, this is how the Docker is being initialized. And yeah, there is no containers, there is no images, no volumes as of now, right? This is the fresh download of docker as i'm showing you on the screen right now let me go back to the terminal and let me clear the screen what is the next thing that we need to do according to our documentation if i go back here uh, make sure to paste the open ai keys in the dot env so only thing that you need to change is the dot env file because that is where we provide our environment variables and what I noticed here is when you run by default also, there are some of the API keys needed so that what I did here is just paste the random thing or let's say I just provided the random things so that it, it works for us, right? That's what you can do. You can just copy these things and paste it there. I'm just going to copy this from here. And if I go back to that, and now I need to open the .env. By the way, as I said before, you can open any of the code editors you want. But I will do dot, uh, vim .env. This is what I have already pasted some of the things. Open AI API key, entropy key, this, this, and this, right? But you need to provide more of these things here. What I'm going to do is I just copied that first. I will delete all the things from from here okay then i will just go here and paste all the things that i just copied you can just go here and copy and then what you can do is maybe you can just say equals to here and then version two. these are all the things that you copied but you need to provide the open ai api key from where you can get the open ai api key please go to the open ai's website and create a new secret key you need to create the account first I will go here, create the key. I'm showing you this because I'm going to revoke this once I create the video. I will copy this one. I will go back to the terminal 
and on the first here in the placeholder what I'm going to do is copy my API key and I will do escape and then I will save this once that is done we provided the necessary things but we didn't provide everything, right? As I said before also, if you want to trace and evaluate your LR's model apps, we can use the LangSmith. What is LangSmith? Let me open this one. LangSmith is a platform for building production-grade LLM applications. By the way, this is in the beta. You need to be in the waiting list, meaning that sign up for account here. You can go here. It might take some time to get access. Once you get access, then how the UI looks like is this link here. I can go here and this is how the UI looks like. If you have followed my previous videos, I have already created videos related to LangSmith and how to use this. Please refer to that. But here, what we are going to do is inside the project, I'm going to create a new project. I will create project and I will give the name here Open GPTs. Nothing else. I will say submit. Once this is done, as you can see, there is the traces. LLM calls, monitor, and setup, right? Here are the things that you need to provide. This export, uh, trace, and these things. These all things I have already mentioned, and we can just copy this, right? I will copy this, but we need to replace this project and the API key. First, let me go to my terminal. I will again open this Vim, and on the last, what I will do is paste this, right? And what I need to replace this Langsorv and this one. What I will do here is what is the project name I gave is OpenGPTs. What I'm going to do here is okay, replace this with OpenGPT. It's GPTs, right? Let me go back again here. It is OpenGPTs. And what I can do is the API keys. How to get the API keys? Just go to this API key icon here and create the API key. Again, I'm showing you this because I'm going to revoke this anyway. And the API key part here, what I'm going to do here is just replace this and I will do control V. Now we have our OpenAI API keys as well as the LangSmith or the Lang chain API keys. What we can do is save this. Now we provided all the necessary things. If we go back to this website, Okay, we provided this also, and then we also provided uh, the necessary things. What is the next step we need to do is, we just need to run this command now. What I'm doing here is docker-compose, so that is the command you need to run. And I'm pointing the env file with dash dash env dash file. That it will take all the environment variables from this particular dot env and the op meaning that, okay, set up the containers for us, right? I will copy this one. I will go back to the terminal and here I will just paste this. But now if I go back to the Docker desktop, there is nothing here, right? There is no containers. Now, when I run that, the containers must be up and running here. Now I'll go back to the terminal. I will run this. As you see here, it's saying running zero this. Okay, it will run all the necessary steps now. Once this is completed, it will show us that okay now you have the you have the server let's say that uh, the ready server which is used here in this case and also the front end if i go to the docker desktop so here this should be updated showing us okay now your open gpt is running there are two different containers here the, we don't have any containers as you see in the background it is still running once it is all done we will see two different uh, containers running here Let's wait. Yeah, as you can see here, there is this Redis and there is this back end. What, and if you go back to the terminal, as it is shown here, it is running on this, right? But what you can do is you can, of course, click this and go there. But I recommend you to do is go here and there is this 8181. It says localhost. Click this one. Yeah, here is our replicated version of what we see from the LangChain de deployed one. So yeah, that is how we easily created our app. Now, as I said before, we will be testing three different things. First, what we will be doing is, as you can see, there is this new chat, there is this new bot, and there is this bot, new bot. And we can choose agent or this one. I will just go with this one. 
And as I said to you before, also, there are the different agent type we can choose from. You can go with Amazon Bedrock, Cloud 2 or GPT 3.5 Turbo or anything you want. And the, here you can provide your system message. I'm just going to leave as it is now, but it's up to you what you want to decide. And here are the different tools that you can choose so that the LLMs will reflect our answer here. As I said to you before also, we'll be testing three different things. First, I will just go with the normal thing so that it works. What I will do here, create a public link. No, I will give the name as, let's say, test one so that we are just testing it. Let me bring this here and I will save this. Now it is saved. It says, send the message. I will say, hi, and there should be a reply. Okay, hello, how can I assist you today? Meaning that it is working as expected. And now this is the normal uh, chat uh, engine. Let's say chat GPT kind of thing. So you can say, okay, what is Twitter? Just a random thing. Okay, Twitter is social media platforms and all the different things. It is meaning that now this answer is provided by LLM, meaning that the open AI and the default model that is being used in these open GPTs. If you want to dig into what is being used behind the scene, you can go through the repository and find, but this video is not intended in that. It's just to show you how it is being used. And by the way, remember that this is shown here, research preview. This is unauthenticated and all data can be found. Do not use your sensitive data. Remember that. But why did we set up the Langsmith, right? I asked two questions here. Now, if we go to the Langsmith, I will go back. And if I go back to the personal projects, there is the projects and this open GPTs, right? If I go here, as you can see here, there is already the question being shown here. That is what I'm saying. Langsmith helps you to trace your calls. These are the traces. This is the name given by default and there is hi, I asked this, right? And then you can even provide the feedback and so on. Yeah, these are all the things and we'll be asking more questions. For this also, as I said to you before, watch my previous videos, I have shown you how to deal with this Lang Smith. Now let us go back to our app, how to create the new one. As you can see here, there is this new chat. I will go here and we will be creating the new bot, right? I will click the new bot. And the second one is we are going to use the dog dog go sorts because we don't need to provide the API keys. We will sort, we will click this one. And now I will go here and name it, let's say test, but I will say dog dog go. And then I will just save this. And I will ask here maybe what is the weather of Helsinki today? Because now it can go and source from the internet, right? It should, yeah, as you can see here, it says dog, dog, go weather in Helsinki today. And it shows here the weather in Helsinki today is partly cloudy, changing to sunny by lunchtime. The temperature is between minus 9 to 12 and sunrise at this and sunset at this. But we find the answer here because we use the dog, dog, go. But what if I ask the same question in the previous one? If I go to high and if I go here and source this, it does not know the answer because it does not, it is not linked to the source. It says, I'm sorry, but I'm not able to provide real time information. That is how you can quickly switch between two things. But everything is done by you by line chain open GPTs. You can just set up the environment and now third one, let's go with the rag, right? Rag meaning the retrieval augmented generation. What we can do, I will go here and I will create a new bot. And here we will choose the retrieval. What I have done is I have created one document and what I have provided is as in my last video, I have taken the same transcript of the last YouTube video. Uh, I have taken this uh, rag create llama things. And what I have done there is inside there, I have ingested um, this, the price of 5 kg apple and orange is 20 euro and 25 euro respectively. Meaning that in one of the document, I have ingested just random things here. What I want to do here is I want to ask what, what is the price of 5 kg of app, right? Let me do that, how, how to achieve these things. But just to show you that, okay, why I'm trying this is now let me actually go back to this one. And if I say here, okay, what is the price of 5 kg of app? It will say that, okay, it will go to the Dr. Go sorts. It will provide us the answer. Maybe it depends upon the place. The cost of five kg apple can be varying depending upon the location and things. But we haven't provided our document there, right? 
as I said before, let me go to the new chat and let me go to the new bot and I will use this retrieval and here I will upload that document. Okay, so now that doc document is being loaded. Create Llama React Deploy Warcell document and I will just name this retrieval, right? I will just save this. And now once this is saved, I can ask the question related to this particular document, right? Here, let me first check if it works. Hi, okay, how can I assist you? And I can say the same question I asked before. Okay, what is the price of 5kg of Apple? It should provide us the answer from that particular document, right? It said the price of 5kg Apples can vary depending on the location, on the type, and this, this, this. But what I find here is that you need to provide specific questions into the LLM. It still doesn't find, right? That's why I'm saying that not all the things are quite there what OpenAI has created. Because in OpenAI, I ask the same question, it gets the answer. But here, what I need to provide is what is the price of 5kg of Apple in the uploaded, let's say. If I provide this, so it, it says here, okay, retriever and it went inside and price of 5kg of Apple. It looks like there is no specific information about the price of 5kg of apples in the uploaded file. It still didn't get it from that particular things. What I can still type is what is the price of 5kg of apple in the uploaded file. Let's say that in the... I just uploaded to retrieve the information from... If I run this one, let's see if it finds. Okay, I currently don't have information, but let me ask one more question. Okay, what is create llama? It seems that there is no, there must be a misunderstanding. Create llama does not have a specific meaning in the context. It does not find that, right? What I'm trying to show you here is that I did the same thing in open, in, in the GPTs. It works, but here it didn't work. But what I'm trying to do here is now upload the small document. I will go again to new chat right and i will go to this new bot and i will again use the retriever but then i will now just have the small document where i just have the price of that right okay just to show you this is the just a simple text i'm using the price of 5 kg apple and orange is 20 and 25 euro respectively right i will upload this one and let's see if it finds the answer from this small file i will go ahead and upload first yeah here is the fruits price and this is the file i want to upload I will say create public link no and I will say okay taste fruit right and I will save it now I will I will first check if it works hi and it should provide me okay hello how can I assist you and now I will ask the same question okay what is the price of 5 kg of apple now it says that okay the price of 5 kg of apples can vary depending on the location and the type of apples if you have a specific question in mind, I can look up. It is still didn't find. I can say again, what is the price of 5 kg of Apple in the uploaded file? Let me see. Okay, it uses the retriever now. And now it says the price of 5 kg of Apple is 20 euro according to the information in the uploaded file. Now it gets the answer. Why I'm showing you all this is because sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work and it let's say the question or the query that you ask or the prompt needs to be specific uh, to be used this is just what i experienced it might depend upon your use case also and i don't know how it works when you use but one thing let me go and try in the version where where the land chain has been provided right it says here that there is this hosted version i will go to this hosted version let me bring this one here now yeah so this is the hosted version from Langchain, right? What I'm going to do now is again going to create the same bot. I will use the same retrieval and I upload the same file. Okay, I uploaded the same file, create llama rag, right? And then I will name this rag, okay, rag open GPT. That's fine. Now I can ask the question here. I will say first, hi. Okay, how can I assist you? Now I will say what is create llama if it understands or not okay it went through the retrieval and yeah now it finds here 
It says the create llama is a CLI tool used to create a llama index rag applications. In this case, it finds the answer from there, but in the one that I am I'm hosting locally, it didn't find the answer. And now if I say what is the price of 5kg of Apple, let me see. It will maybe go to the retrieval again. Okay, it said the price of 5kg of Apple's can vary because that is kind of generic equation, right? But again, I need to provide in the uploaded file. Let me see what is the price of 5kg of Apple in the uploaded file. Now it will go to the retriever, price of this and this. Same in the hosted version as well as in the local version also, the prompt needs to be specific. Yeah, that's what, that's all of what I wanted to show you. Just give a try, try yourself. Maybe I missed something somewhere, the results are not correct. It can happen and maybe it will be more and more refined in the future. Okay, the reason I told you that you need to do some experiment is because now what I did was I converted the old document into PDF and then I uploaded the same file, right? I asked here, okay, what is the price of 5 kg of Apple? Then it still doesn't find the information. But then what I did, was I just asked what is Create Llama, right? And it just went through the retrieval and it went still to the retrieval. It didn't find any information, but as you can see here, the good part here is that it knows where the information is also taking from, right? It went through this, it says it still cannot find it, but you can see that it already has the information from where to provide and it still went one step more and now here it says the information retrieved is related to the creation of RAG applications. And if you click this, here you can see the different chunks of the, of the irretrievable information or let's say the semantic source that it did, right? This is the page content and as you can see here the down there is also other things and it just takes the information from all of this and provided the answer. What it means is that it works and maybe the model type is also the issue here or you can try with different models maybe GPT-4 might help but now if you want to close this how to do that that is the reason why I'm using this uh, docker right as you can see all the logs are being shown in the terminal itself. Now you can do control C, it is stopped. Now, if you still do Docker images, it will show us that, okay, there is this ready search and there is this backend, right? How to make it down? As I mentioned in this document also here, if you scroll a little bit down, I showed here, okay, Docker compose down. I will copy this. I will go back to the terminal and then I will just control V, paste this one. I will run. Now it says, okay, remove, remove, remove. Now if I go back and say Docker images, it's still shown here. And now as you can see here, it says remove, remove, remove. Now if I go back to the Docker and here, as you can see all the Docker things that is here, containers are gone, but there are still some of the images, right? What you can do here is you can remove the uh, images by yourself from the terminal, or you can already go here and remove the images. You can just go here. Maybe select this one and then delete. So you can just delete forever. That's gone. Cool. There might be some volumes also because the volume is attached to where you run that. You can just go here, click, and then delete, delete. Now you don't have any volumes. You don't have any images. You don't have any containers. By the way, you can do all that from the terminal itself also. But easier is to go through the eye in the beginning just to show how it works. Now if I do Docker images, so there is no Docker images, meaning that everything is now removed. So yeah, that's all I wanted to show you in this. Now I hope you get the idea how to go through this open GPT and then create the, or let's say use the replicated version of that. If you just want to try, just go with the hosted version that is provided by Langchain. Or if you just want to use or try it yourself and experiment with different things, you can just go there and play around it. Yeah, in the next one, I will show you the Lama Index Racks, which is also the inspired from OpenAI's GPTs. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.